first off, we're really excited. Like this is the first time that Jane and I will be um, uh, facilitating th this workshop. So we really want to learn about your ideas and your um, local challenges uh, that you would like to share and hope to create a space so that we can share, um, uh, learn from each other and possibly find ways of um, like how we can collaborate each other, with each other once we go back to our own um, communities. Um, and if you don't mind, we will quickly share about how this workshop will be organized so you have an idea. And then, oh, we have our colleague here. Yes, uh, a couple of things. First of all, technical. Please disregard the slides built up the Google thing. We will be not taking questions this, this way. Uh, and I have no idea how to turn it Alt F4, Alt F4. So this is that. Uh, Branimir, I don't know if you can uh, hear us. Uh, you are uh, right now live. If you would like to say a couple of uh, sentences about your wonderful uh, uh -huh. role. Hello, everyone. My name is Branimir Pippel. I have been working in the foundation approximately like Machete for uh, last year or so, but not always in the movement strategy and governance team. <clears throat> right now I am together with Aida and Mache in as a facilitator for the three of us are facilitators for Central and Eastern Europe and Central Asia. I have not been active in the movement before, so I am also a kind of movie, but I am all learning quickly. Uh, that's it. And the three of us have co-authored the presentation you are going to see and participate today. Unfortunately, I couldn't be in Ocarid, but I'm sure the two of them are doing an excellent job. Thank you. And please feel free to ask any questions you may have. You can post them on the forum, the Movement Strategy Forum, which is a platform for you to share, to start discussions, to ask questions, and you can do that in your native language. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bernina. Now I'd like to... Uh, present you for 30 seconds to a minute about the Movement Strategy Forum uh, that some of you may have already used this tool. It's a discussion tool uh, based on the discourse uh, framework. Uh, it's allowed for friendly discussions. It's very like, uh, well, but it's basically a forum. So those of you that were alive in the ancient 80s and 90s can remember how they used to work. If not, uh, the design is uh, quite easy. The biggest advantage for that is uh, you can edit your posts, the discussion can be threaded, and you can post in any language you want. And then just by clicking the globe, every, communi uh, every communication you see there can be translated to over 300 languages. <coughs> so uh, for this workshop we'll be <coughs> using the forum as your notes and any ideas we come up with will be put on the forum. Uh, the idea behind that is the forum gets several hundred views a week and either parts, once they're used, nobody ever reads them. So hopefully your ideas will inspire someone and you can engage in conversation with them. Uh, with that, I will pass the, uh, with that, I will yes. pass to my colleague Aida. Can uh, show again, uh, go back to the forum to end? Uh, yeah, before we jump into uh, the workshop, we would like to ask you to go on the forum and please um, take one minute to fill um, in the uh, pre-workshop survey that has about four questions and don't need to provide like a very long answers, but just we would like to know the temperature in the room before we start and after that we will also have a post-workshop um, short survey just to see how um, beneficial uh, or useful was this workshop for you? Yes, I'm sending the link to the, the forum post right now uh, on, on Telegram channel. Yeah, maybe that would be easier for some people. 
Any questions so far? Okay, great. Let's take a couple of minutes on that. Is the pre workshop sorry, for participants? To read, you can just visit the forum. If you want to write, you have to log in with your Wikimedia account. But that's later. Hi, my name is Walter 
Let I represent the Kazakh Wikimedians. Uh, Wikimedians of Kazakh language. Uh, if I had a superpower, um, uh, it's boring. It, uh, um, maybe like flying. Oh. <laughs> okay. Without any. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Let's, let's continue the same. Sure. Hi everybody, I'm Chris Schilling. I'm from the Wikimedia Foundation. Uh, I'm also a volunteer on English Wikipedia. Uh, if I had to have a superpower, I would want to slow down time. <laughs> so I could do like super cool moves like, whoa! <laughs> and, that, and that sort of thing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We have no takers. Um, do you want to share? Hello, my name is Pisa, and I'm volunteering in Wikipedia for Macedonia. If I have a superpower, it will be probably reading people's minds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Simona, I'm also a volunteer from Lama Macedonia. If I had a superpower, uh, this would be teleporting. Okay. Great, thanks. Uh, okay, I'm Tony Vistovsky uh, from uh, Macedonia Wikipedia, you will go to share knowledge. <coughs> And uh, I would want to, to, to travel in the past. Mm. Mm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am Mirko. I'm here as an editor from Croatian language community. And if I would have a superpower, probably it would be to be able to speak any language I want. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Barbara. I'm from Croatia and I'm a new C, C Hub coordinator. Uh, my superpower, if I could have one, would be tra time traveling, but it would be past, future, everything. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can elaborate on that. <laughs> but that's not here. My name is Vera from Slovenia User Group. I want to have a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> All the fighting, fighting in all the world. Exactly. It's a good one. Thanks. Oh, we're doing this one. Hi, I'm Claude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's finish yes, the side, you're, sorry. You're, you're <laughs> confusing people. Uh, so I'm Claudia, I'm from Romanian user group, Romanian Moldovan user group, and, and if I would have a superpower, I would make exercising easy. <laughs> ah! <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, I'm Delphine, I, I guess I represent the global <laughs> community. <laughs> um, and if I had a superpower, it would be uh, the ability to see people's thoughts color. So that I could, if they have dark thoughts, thoughts, then I would give them color so that they could have better thoughts. Okay. Aren't you already doing that? Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm Ivana. I'm from Wikimedia Serbia, and I would also like to fly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tomasz from Wikimedia Polska, and I think that time travel is okay for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Ivan, I'm from Montenegro, and he just uh, <laughs> 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 it was between us two. It's not Ivan, Ivan, it's Ivan. Yeah. <laughs> Ivan. And I would like to maybe lose some weight <laughs> magically. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Tatiana from Macedonia, Wikipedia, and I want uh, teleporting maybe in just a moment to go to Hawaii. <laughs> uh, hi, I am Igor, uh, member of Blan Macedonia, and I, if I have a superpower, it would be probably time uh, time dilatation. So not just for matrix kind of thing, uh, for having a little bit more time. Sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Uh, hi, uh, my name is Ulim. I'm from Kudus Wikipedia. Uh, I would love to know how to fix people's relationships. Oh, yes. 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 Money maker. <laughs> uh, hi, uh, I am Wesley. I'm from uh, Kurdistan. Uh, I'm also on the street of Okay. Thank you. Hello, I'm Nadir. I am from the Uzbek uh, community. If I had a superpower, I would turn a certain dictator into a rabbit. Hi, my name is Mujahid. I'm, um, I'm from. Uh, I'm a member of Uzbek language community. And if I have a, if I had superpower, um, it will, it would probably be uh, freezing time to finish the deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello, I'm Ivan. I'm from Wikimedia Serbia. Uh, 
Hello everyone, uh, I'm Abdul Malik uh, from the community. Uh, I want to know uh, deeply about uh, the secrets of uh, space, uh, for example. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Natalia from Wikimedia Poland. I, at first I wanted to join the amazing team of time slowers and travelers and freezers because I also have deadlines. <laughs> and I would like to also re relive some amazing moments. But in the end, I would just like to fill people's hearts with empathy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, hi, I'm Petra from Croatian Community and I would like to abolish borders with my laser eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Bojana, I'm from Republika Srpska, and my superpower uh, would be maybe I'm uh, to speak English better. That's something which can help you. I'm Bojana too, <laughs> from Republika Srpska, and maybe, maybe um, travel through time. Uh, my name is Grzegorz, I'm from Wikimedia Poland. Uh, I guess I used to have a superpower, but somehow I lost it. I was a football player. <laughs> uh, but I guess now uh, predicting the future is okay. No, you don't want to know, Grzegorz. Give me the lottery numbers, Grzegorz. No, no, they have for me. Hi, uh, I'm Wojciech. I'm from the Polish community. I'm also part of AFCOM. And my superpower. That's, that's going to be uh, something surprising for you, probably. I would like to be able to forget cool moments in my life so I can relive them again. Like Floor Janssen hitting that ridiculous high note in one of the songs. Vladimir, what would be your superpower? Hey, uh, my superpower yeah. would be to teleport myself over there to Ankur. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Right. Thank you, everyone. Um, really good to uh, hear about your super desired superpowers. But here, um, as I've uh, given you the stickers, if you could think of one problem uh, that you want to solve or you are interested in, in your community or in the region, whatever problem that might be, just write it very short, uh, a word or a sentence. You have a minute for that. And you don't need to present it, uh, or you don't need to show it to anyone, so. Can you have a community? Yeah? You're giving a community, you're affiliate, you're affiliate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. You got it? Okay, good. Yeah, I already written mine, so I can give it to you. No, you can keep it. Okay, um, and if you have written it, then please keep it uh, by yourself. And from here, um, so the first part of this uh, session will be, we will have a very short presentation about movement strategy and also information about movement strategy implementation grants. Um, some of you uh, have participated in the drafting of movement strategy recommendations and actively participated in the whole process before. Uh, and maybe some of you here uh, don't have so much information, so that's why like, to freshen the, um, the information, we, we wanted to just share um, a presentation on that. And after that, we have guests, um, Natalia, um, Tony and we also have uh, Chris from the foundation that um, if you have specific questions about projects, uh, about their process, you can also ask these people. Um, and on the second part of this workshop, we will have uh, work in smaller groups. We will um, get specific questions about the project and work in our own um, smaller groups. So we will see how it goes. But Okay, now we will move to the uh, presentation and um, so yeah, what is movement strategy basically? Yeah? Um, it's a very like big word, movement and strategy. Can everybody see this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so movement strategy is a process to figure out what changes we want to see in the movement, looking forward to, towards the future. And uh, the the movement here um, applies to uh, all the stakeholders within the movement that are the communities, 
for example, I'm in a Polish Wikipedia, Kyrgyz speaking Wikipedia, and as well as uh, affiliates, including chapters and user groups, and uh, the Wikimedia Foundation. Next one. And uh, what makes it special? Um, so, um, dependless on where we are located, we all share the same goals. And the movement strategy uh, provides the space for us, dependent on what language we, we speak, dependent on what problems and context we come from, to work together to uh, implement um, the goals that we share um, together. Next one. Uh, yeah, and why a movement strategy? Um, movement strategy was inspired by the need within the communities to find a way to work together collaboratively, and that there is, um, it's not about like one project like Wikipedia or another one, but it's about everyone who is, um, who cares about the movement and who is in the movement including people who are not here with us probably, who don't know yet about the movement strategy and what amazing ideas and initiatives are there. And um, so one of the um, struggles uh, is that, was that people uh, were sharing that um, about difficulties of, for example, allocating funds to different regions and to different um, countries and um, for example, funds within the uh, movement belongs to everyone, but at the same time, uh, how do we decide where does the money go um, and how do we put the priorities? So, movement strategy helps us to come together and try to make decisions on these important uh, issues um, collaboratively. And yeah, and on a more um, general level, like, things in a rapidly changing world, like on an individual way, we are trying to adapt to, for example, during the pandemic, we have changed our jobs and maybe we have relocated, etc. And the same for the movement, which is um, global, with so many people with different backgrounds, to, um, to think of like, how are we as a movement going to adapt to these changes, be it demographically, um, technologically, as well as when it comes to um, political and social political challenges in our own um, locales. And for this, if you are interested, there are very um, like numerous research that was done um, in 2017 and later about like predictions of how things might change and how um, the movement can change and how can we respond and adapt to these changes that is happening in the world. Next one. Yeah, and why does it matter to you? Um, so, um, as we already said, it's about collaboration and finding ways to work together. Um, so, um, yeah, I guess everybody can define it for themselves, like how it matters for you. And yeah, mostly it's about experience and knowledge sharing and most probably the project or initiative that you are working on or that you want to work on. Um, is being realized or has been realized somewhere else. Like maybe you are from, let's say, CE, and there is another project that has already been realized somewhere in African country or somewhere in Northern Europe. So, the, um, um, so you don't need to invent a wheel, but you can um, talk to people and learn from them. You know, so you don't need to make the same uh, mistakes. Um, and yeah, to build collaborations, uh, to help each other. Um, and also in our team, uh, Movement Strategy and Governance, we have facilitators that speak about 15 languages, including English. 24. 24, okay, <laughs> that was uh, for translations. Um, 24 <laughs> languages, so like if you have ideas and you want to discuss about Movement Strategy, how you can implement it in your place, uh, in your country, in your community, then we encourage you to um, like reach out to us, any of us, in your language, if you are, okay, I see everybody is perfect here in English, but like, for other people, yeah, like if they want to talk, then um, it's uh, encouraged. Next one? Yeah, and a uh, timeline of movement strategy, uh, there is a vision, um, which is a one sentence, um, of the movement and there was um, uh, a lot of different kind of strategic thinkings and works been done 
between this time until 2018. And from 2018, we have um, more strategy and also 10 recommendations and um, principles and about 50 initiatives that are being realized and are, that are in different stages. And we are here now implementing those recommendations uh, in our um, context. And yeah, and I would like to ask someone to read the vision that is uh, presented here. Um, anybody wants to um, just read it out loud? Probably. Mehran is smiling. <laughs> Imagine a world in which every single human being can freely share in the sum of all human knowledge. That's our commitment. Yep. This is the vision that we are working on towards and every day in our projects. Thank you. Next one. Um, yep, and the need for a strategy. Um, in 2016, uh, the Board of Trustees of the Wikimedia Foundation asked what does the Wikimedia movement need to fulfill its vision? And what does it mean to be a movement? And since then, um, uh, in 2016, the board approved a new process, which is uh, being realized currently. And um, um, so the, the goals of this process is, it goes beyond the immediate priorities that we do within our um, communities, like working in the, con uh, contributing to the project uh, every day, etc. But it, it goes more forward to thinking about the future and to address the, the challenges that we um, hi. Uh, so yeah, it's more uh, aiming towards a long-term vision of a global movement. Yeah, and the strategic direction was produced of the uh, movement strategy uh, the strategic direction is the first product of the movement strategy that was, uh, he tells us about the movement, uh, Wikimedia movement, uh, what the Wikimedia movement aims to achieve by 2030. And if somebody else would like to read this um, uh, code here, that would be great. Okay. Yeah, please. By 2030, Wikimedia will become the essential infrastructure of the ecosystem of free knowledge. And anyone who shares our vision, will be able to join us. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and um, the movement strategy, um, the strategic direction, the previous one was, um, there were a lot of communities that participated during the drafting and preparation of it, and it was also, um, and like, it's, I think it's worth to mention that like I, I wasn't uh, in the movement or in the community during the time, but probably you who are here have a lot of information and can add a lot to this, which we welcome. And there are also the, some of the communities that weren't really part of it due to uh, various, um, yeah, like challenges that exist. So um, I think that's just worth to mention. Um, but everybody, uh, people are on different levels, so it's it's uh, there is information. It's possible to kind of get to it. Yeah? Okay. And we have strategic direction uh, that um, has two goals or twin goals. Which first one is uh, sounds uh, knowledge as a service that to serve our users, we will become a platform that serves open knowledge to the world across interfaces and communities. And the second one is knowledge equity. As a social book movement, we will focus our efforts on the knowledge and communities that have been left by the structures of power and privilege. Yeah. Okay. And from here, we will move to, uh, to uh, specific recommendations, and Moche will uh, tell about it more. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Aida. Uh, thanks to Aida, we've seen uh, the past of the strategy, how it was created, uh, how the process has been going on for the last six years. As she told you, there are 10 recommendations in the movement. Increase sustainability of our... Let's go back. Uh, there are 10 long sentences. Uh, they are big, one can say, corporate words, 
<laughs> and I will try to bring it a bit closer to you to explain you what those terrible sentences actually mean. Increase the sustainability of our movement. This is the recommendation number one. It aims to, uh, as the name suggests, increase sustainability. Uh, this comes in all shapes and forms. First of all, it's the sustainability of our volunteers, their attention. As you all probably know, there is a big burnout problem in the affiliates, in the affiliates, the volunteers, and the contributors contributing to the Wikimedia projects. One of the uh, the, end, the other part about sustainability is that Wikimedia is based on one source of income and always has been. Uh, while it's amazing that we can uh, tell about ourselves, <coughs> we are supported by donations and of our affiliates by some small grants. Uh, it's not very sustainable because, it, uh, because we depend on one source of income. One of the uh, biggest projects that aims at this recommendation is the Wikimedia Foundation's led Wikimedia Enterprise, which some of you may have heard. This is a commercial project run by the foundation that uh, created a special API, let's say a gate, for the big tech companies to actually pay for the content from Wikipedia. <coughs> Uh, for the long time, they have been using the data from Wikipedia without paying, so we decided to build a special gate for them to come, take it officially, and pay, and pay the Wikimedia movement. Improve user experience. Uh, some of you may have seen that Wikimedia projects seem like the, the websites have been taken from the 90s or from the early 2000s. It serves it, it served a purpose, so people don't see too much change. It can be reliable upon, but our pages are no longer uh, having the same effect on the readers as they used to before. So uh, Wikimedia movement is focusing on changing that. One of the, best, uh, one of the biggest changes you could see in the uh, last years have been discussion tools, also created by the foundation, that are helping the discussion with the projects, or the new vector skin, the new vector skin which actually ch will change in the next couple of weeks the very way the Wikipedia works. You can join the consultations on that in your village one right now. Provide for safety and inclusion. Uh, as we all know, Wikipedia sometimes can be unsafe and can not be very inclusive uh, place to be. Uh, the, main pro the, the main project being done under the strategy uh, to help with this recommendation is the Universal Code of Conduct, which is the first big overhaul of the terms of use since 2014. It aims to provide the guidelines and how to do the movement to actually deal with harassment and create a better, safer environment for volunteers. And for equity in decision making, this is something that I've already discussed with some of you at this meeting. Sometimes it may feel in the Wikimedia movement like decisions are taken behind a closed door without any consultation. Uh, the uh, movement chart and the Global Council will aim to change that. They will try to write some rules on how the movement is gathered. But on a closer level, the best example of this uh, recommendation is the CE Hub. It brings the decision-making power closer to the CE communities, so the decisions about the region will be made in the region, not outside of it. Coordinate across stakeholders. Uh, while there isn't a clear project one can attribute to this recommendation, it's the way that our movement tries to work. We have different stakeholders. We have technical writers, we have developers, we have the foundation, affiliates, we have the communities, and we can only work together if we work together. Yeah. Invested skill and language development. Some communities uh, that started later are not as established. They hadn't had the chance or time or resources to actually establish some leadership. By leadership, I don't mean somebody that will rule the project, but there are some certain skills that may help uh, in any Wikimedia community. For example, create a user group. You need certain skills. Uh, to create arbitration committee, you need certain skills. And, uh, Right now, we are actually in defining what the leadership is. There is a leadership development working group, working, consists of Wikimedia staff and volunteers, and we hope to have a clear project in the next 18 months that will help people from the newer communities uh, actually free of charge, learn new skills that they will be later able to use in their own communities. Manage internal knowledge, uh, once again, there isn't a clear uh, way to implement that other than to improve our behavior. As you all know, the documentation in media wiki projects has historically not been the perfect one. The knowledge management of affiliates has not been a perfect one. We still rely on personal experience and personal knowledge 
if one person disappears from the movement, this knowledge is lost. So we try to, the new projects are run under the umbrella of cultural documentation uh, and a base of knowledge that can be used by other people. Identify topics for impact. Uh, sometimes in the UK movement we assume that because we see something as a problem, it is a problem, or because uh, we think it's important, it's important. Uh, some processes are run to determine what actually there is for impact. Uh, some of you that have attended the meeting with the WMF staff on Thursday evening uh, may remember that uh, some, somebody asked a question about the Global Data and Insight team, what do they do? There are people in the foundation, the athletes in the movement, that are trying to identify what topics are there that are most important for us to act upon. Innovate in free knowledge. In here, the good example is uh, within the Deutschland uh, Accelerator Unlock project. Uh, within the Deutschland has taken a grant from the foundation, from the Movement Strategy Implementation Grant, to run a scientist-based group that works with the people in the Wikimedia movement to identify, uh, once again, topics for impact, but also find a way how, to, how we can innovate. Because you could have seen some of their papers published in Wikimedia L, for example, about centralized governance or decentralized funding. And the last one is evaluate, iterate, and adapt. There isn't a single project that can be attributed to that, uh, but we are trying to improve the way we work we are trying to come to communities multiple times to be sure that everybody has been heard. You could see that a universal code of conduct has been created over the period of three years. And in this case, it's not because somebody is dragging their feet behind. It's mostly because every time we do certain changes to the text, we come back to the community to ask for more and more comment. This is the only way we can ensure that everybody has had a chance to participate in the process. Uh, movement Strategy Implementation Grants um, are a program created by the Foundation uh, over two years ago and run by uh, our team that help communities, affiliates or uh, contributors actually implement some of the recommendations you could have seen before. Uh, we offer up to 25,000 US dollars for every person with a clear idea and a clear plan to implement some recommendations. I've mentioned Wikimedia Deutschland's project. Uh, later on, we will offer you uh, a few minutes of talk from Natalia and Tony to explain the way they work on the uh, they work on their own uh, MSAG funded projects. Uh, these grants differ from uh, the usual grants that are done by the foundation, as their focus is meant to be implementing the strategy. <coughs> Uh, as you can see, right now, there are four main initiatives that the grants are focusing on. It's either leadership development, uh, skills of the community I mentioned before, paths and movement charter. Uh, the closest example to all of you here that is connected to the MSIG is actually funding of the pilot of the uh, CE hub for one year. Those are funds by the MSIG pro program for the CE communities that came up with a plan to organize a hub now are trying to implement it. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, this, pro this program, uh, once again, differs from other uh, foundation offers grant programs in the past, as we try to be flexible. There is no one framework that one has to bring a program, uh, and we actually don't expect the community to come up with a plan all on their own. If you have an idea or a big problem that you'd like to uh, help with, or you'd like to solve, or maybe you have a recommendation without a full understanding what it is, we would like to offer you uh, help. Uh, we would like to help you develop this idea on your own pace with the help of the local facilitators, of the program manager, uh, without a need to for a strict grant applying program that you could know in the past. Where to start? First of all, we are here. I am here, Ida's here, Brodinger is joining us at the meet. Uh, you can always contact us at the strategy2030 at wikimedia.org. You can email us on wiki. We are here to answer your questions. There are no stupid questions. There are only stupid answers. So uh, the burden here is on us. Feel free to ask us anything.
And now we'd like to uh, invite Natalia from India, Poland uh, to speak uh, for a moment about her, her program, the Peer Support for Administrators, and how was her experience with the MSH grants. Okay. Hello everyone, I, I will be talking about something I'm super passionate about, so if I will be skipping time, just feel free to <laughs> show them. Okay, so uh, my name is Natalia. Um, I work with the community support team in Media Poland. And for some years now, I have been working around two important topics, community health and volunteer burnout. And uh, at some point of my work, I found out that there is one specific point in which those two topics meet. And it is the point when um, Polish media administrators are acting to react on harassment issues and work on the health and safety of the community. We put all the burden on the safety of the community of Wikipedia on a small group of people. We expect them to enter into difficult conflict situations and resolve them. We expect them to react on situations when people are harassed. We expect them to have a certain level of empathy towards people who are actually feeling unsafe in the movement and a certain level of resilience in the situations when they are the targets of harassment themselves and yet we do nothing to prepare administrators for taking up those tasks we do nothing to prevent them from being burned out in the process and when I was working with administrators I've heard that a lot that they on some occasions are not sure how to react they are afraid of making the wrong decisions, they feel tired, they feel all bad. So, what I was thinking is that in order to <coughs> bring more safety into the movement, we need to take care of those who work around safety. Especially that burnout is this kind of condition which takes people who care and who have those open caring hearts and then turn them into people who are tired, cynical, they don't care, they don't believe they can make a change. And so those amazing people start being amazing in the process. So I was thinking that we should take care about, about those people, provide them with tools and skills that they need to do their work, but also pro provide them with support so that they can uh, support each other in making those decisions, but also talk about difficult situations that they have. So my idea was to create a series of meetings and trainings for administrators to build a peer support network of them so that they take care, take care of safety better. So I approached uh, the movement strategy team and actually I totally support what Mati said about you don't have to go with a ready-made project because you will receive the support that you need. I had some amazing conversations, both with Jop, who is the movement strategy specialist, and Crystal Steingerberger, I hope I pronounced the name right, uh, who is working with peer support in the movement. And we had a lot of amazing conversations about the project. They asked me questions, they went through the project with me, fought with me around it, they helped me with creating the budget, and I, I, I think that those conversations apart from getting the grant at the end, but the possibility to have those conversations, those, those very deep conversations, together with the va value themselves. Because we could talk through my idea, think how we can make it better, how to measure results, how to add to it, how it works with the whole strategy, what can we do, and the thing that was actually super amazing is that when I brought my idea, um, to you, you could see that she actually was really fascinated and interested in making it work. So it was really good and I actually encourage you to have this conversation no matter how vague your idea at this point is. Right now the project is ongoing. It started with a survey uh, of the administrators and I will be publishing some basic insights from the survey on the movement strategy forum. The project has a thread there. so. If you are interested in what I'm doing, keep going there because I will be informing people. Uh, and at the end, I will be have, like we will, me and Poland will be publishing um, a report with some findings and some information how different communities can also like use the peer support framework to provide more safety to the movement. 
is finished uh, are finished uh, all, finally. So we will uh, uh, have an implementation. Uh, if uh, just for you, uh, because from many people I think already know who who is the but Armenian is actually a small language group that existed on the Balkans, very similar to the Romanian language, but are distinguished uh, people. So they live mostly in Macedonia, but uh, they have it like uh, in Greece uh, uh, and Romania, uh, like uh, small portions. Uh, and uh, they have it uh, on uh, Wikipedia. Uh, Romanian people don't have it. It is in incubator. So uh, that is uh, like a challenge for us, but uh, it will be like a, uh, we will see what will be the results after the implementation. So I think also the foundation ways how we will done this because it, it, it will be like a great example how underrepresented languages will be uh, supported with this Thank you very much. Thank you very much. and I told the Haya not to color her story too much. So with all the amazing things they said here, I only wonder what bad things they're telling behind our backs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, now uh, we'd like to ask you uh, this question again. After we've talked to you about movement strategy, you explained the process, and you've shared what Tony and Natalia uh, have planned. Uh, please answer yourself either on a card or in your head this question. We'll give you 30, 45 seconds. Would you have to read it? <laughs> Would you read this question? Oh yeah, the, the question is, please share one problem that you want to solve or you're interested in. Is the first question, is the question that we asked you at the start? Sure. Okay. And the overlying assumption under asking you this the second time is whether after you've learned more about movement strategy and heard other ideas, did your previous answer change? Okay. Is there something that you would change in your previous idea, previous problem? Uh, okay. And now? Uh, thank you for the uh, boring theoretical uh, lecture. We'd like to divide you into uh, small groups and give you 25 minutes to work uh, on one of the problems that your group agrees on and would like to solve using movement strategy grants. So I will uh, assume that everybody that stayed here is interested in that. And I would, uh, there is 30 of us, so I would like you to. Uh, count from one to six. And remember your number, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, On the same um, topic, there is a movement strategy uh, um, implementation package that is basically an example <laughs> of an EFA grant that where you have specific links for translation of meta pages, you have specific information about activities and um, the problem setting, etc. And in your groups, you can um, rework it or, or you can refer to that if it's necessary. And the questions we'd like you to answer are, what, what is the problem you're trying to solve? What specific movement strategy initiative does this problem fall under or why? Uh, what is your suggested solution to, or solutions to the problem you are working on? Is there a particular solution you would like to focus on? And the third one, what specific activities will be carried out during the project? 
it's only a pilot, it's not a grant application, please use the uh, time uh, to work on the main focus points uh, for your idea. Thank you. Let's get together. And, and after that, that, if the time allows, we'll try to like, present it.